Today, I'm going to work on a project, a proof of concept to address a problem that I think we all take seriously, privacy, specifically voice privacy, protecting our conversations from snooping. There are microphones all around us, all day long in digital assistants like Alexa, in security cameras, smart TVs, our phones always on and potentially always listening to everything we say. They can even listen to the unique sound a keyboard makes when we type our passwords and decode that. Now, once there is a device with a microphone in it near you, there is no easy patch, no magic box or app we can install to completely mitigate this threat. But what we can do is explore what tech can help tailor it to our needs, try it out, and see how it can be improved. As you all know, a microphone is a small device that takes the vibrations in the air and converts them to an electrical signal. If you were to overlay the very loud vibrations of, say, a rock concert on the softer vibrations of people speaking, it would drown out the voices. The problem is that then the people speaking would not be able to hear each other over the loud music. How can we vibrate the microphone but still hear each other speak? Fortunately, microphones like Momo can hear things humans can't. By using ultrasonic frequencies, we can vibrate the microphone enough to mask some human speech. That's exactly what a team from the Sand Lab at University of Chicago did when they made a wearable microphone jammer. Of course, my explanation is greatly, greatly simplified. If you want to get into the nitty-gritty of harmonic distortion and all the clever things they did, I'll link to the project in the description. In this video, working with my friends at JLCPCB, I'm going to iterate on their design test it out and see if it really works and if it does see how I can improve on it. The Senap design used these little ultrasonic transducers. One of the problems with this is they have a fairly narrow focus, about 20 to 50 degrees depending. If they aren't pointed right at the microphone, it's hard for them to do their job. The team addressed this problem by building the transducers into a bracelet. So natural speaking gestures would wave the focus auto sound over a wide area. What I'm going to do is build them into a choker. So wherever my mouth is pointed, the transducers are pointed also. Hopefully making sure my audio, my speech is always overlapped by the audio of the ultrasonic transducers pointed in the same direction. I've used JLC PCB's PCBA service so the board has been almost completely soldered and assembled for me. Not so DIY, but the soldering is the easy part. The tricky part is next building it cleanly into a stylish wearable enclosure with a cyberpunk flare. Before I do, I'm just going to let JLC get in the word. They take good care of me and help me work on cool projects like this one. I hope you'll think about using them for your next or even your very first hardware project. It's a lot easier than you think to do stuff like this. This video is made possible by the generous support of JLC PCB, China's largest PCB manufacturer. With JLC, you can have your PCB manufactured in under 24 hours, all while you track the process in real time. Prototype boards start at just $2 in any color. Check the description box for more info. One of the best ways to support me is to support the companies that fund this channel. Okay, this is uh, me talking with the jammer off. This is my normal speaking voice. I'm going to turn on the jammer. Okay, I made this rough shape in Tinkercad. The inside curve is enough room for my neck and a strap, and then enough space around it for the electronics. 
I'm gonna export it. And um, this is called Ravenator. It makes all those little holes. It's a very simple web app. I'm gonna select less holes and thickness of new layers is gonna be thinner. It's just a really simple way to make that kind of finish. I like the process. I'm going to download the PLY file as the full size version. It doesn't really look good if you download the reduced face cam one. Okay, this is mesh lab. I have to decimate the mesh. So I go to quadratic edge collapse decimation. That's way too high. I need to get it below 300,000. So I hit um, apply. It's um. If we look at the faces still over 300,000. So I'm just gonna do the exact same thing again. I mean, that's probably an easy way, but uh, this is how I do it. And now it's 157,000. So it's um, got a few enough spaces. Faces will be able to import it into Tinkercad with no problems. Okay, now I'm going to import it by dragging it into Tinkercad. And there you go. So now that I have that to work with. What I'm going to want to do is just add an opening so I can put the board in and I'm going to show you how I do that. The water loin lattice I've used for the choker is very cool looking. But the problem is, it's going to be very, very hard to print on an FDM printer like the Creality Ender 3. But that gives me the perfect opportunity to test out the new LD006, a large size LCD printer from Creality 3D. The LD006 is a resin printer, so expose a resin to UV light and hardens it layer by layer for a print that's much, much higher resolution than an FDM printer can manage. The downside is they're a bit more messy, and you have to be careful working with the resin. Some people work with a respirator, but I found the only way I'm comfortable is working with all the windows open so there is good cross ventilation and staying out of the room during the printing process. But everyone has different preferences and some people are less sensitive. Resin prints can be a bit fragile, so I'll be using this isn't tough resin to make sure it's strong enough to wear. I'll link to it in the description. Next to the printer is the UW01. It's a washing and curing station. It uses isopropyl alcohol to wash any excess resin off the print and then UV light to finish the curing process. It is unfortunately designed for smaller creality printers than the LD006 but we can make it work for what we are doing today. Let's get to it! Alright, now we are in Chutu Box. Um, this is the latest version and we are going to import our models. Alright, this I'm going to import two models. So uh, this one, uh, I have to rotate it so that I can fit two on the plate. I'm going to rotate. I'm going to change the x axis to minus 90 degree 
can move it down a bit and then I'm going to import the other model same thing I'm going to rotate it Okay, and then select all and then center. All right. Okay can move it by just by your dragging your mouse if you go to the settings um it uh, has already has the creality ld006 you just click ok and all the settings are all there you don't have to mess around with it what we're going to do next is to slice both uh both of them so we're going here we're going to add some support for them you can choose lights medium heavy I'm going to just heavy and um, add our support and then I'm going to slice that okay it's going to take me about 15 hours and 30 minutes 45 seconds and also tells you how much it's gonna uh, wait and the volume so we can just hit save and save it to our file our usb and then we can start to print it Unfortunately, this printer head is bigger than the curing machine, so I'm just going to wash the model and the head separately to get rid of the resins on the plate. Right next, I'm going to put the model in the basket that throws the isopropyl uh, alcohol. In that way, uh, we can get off the excess resins on the print.
Okay, now the machine is rinsing off all the extra resin with the isopropyl alcohol. Okay, the most important thing is to work in a very, very well ventilated space. I have all my doors and windows open and I have my fan going. I don't want to breathe any of that stuff in. Okay, I broke one part, but I can uh, finish off the other one. I just got to be gentle with this. There are some white spots from where I removed the support. I'm just going to dab some resin on to cover it up. Okay, the UV light is going to take about an hour to harden the resin. Okay, 3.7 volt, that's fine. Okay, it's working. Now we can put it in our choker.
Okay, this looks good. I'm just going to test it one last time and then pull it up. Now I'm going to turn on the jammer. Okay, now I'm in the clouded bar. I'm going to test my drummer here and see if it works. Okay, this is, uh, I haven't turned it on yet. This is my normal voice and there are some loud music in the background. Now I'm going to turn it on. Okay, now I'm in the clouded bar. I'm going to test my drummer here and see if it works. Okay, this is, uh, I haven't turned it on yet. This is my normal voice and there are some loud music in the background. Now I'm going to turn it on. Okay, so clearly the jammer does not work at all with a high quality studio mic like this one. But that's okay and pretty much what I expected because it's not designed for that. The jammer is meant to deal with all the little internet connected microphones hidden around us. Not deliberate attempts to record with a shotgun, parabolic or other high quality studio microphone. That's a different problem, but one we might be able to solve with similar hardware. The Jamma does work very, very well with smartphones and other small devices. Of course, as a prototype, I made this a little oversized for ease of assembly. It could easily be half the size and a bit less obtrusive. If you'd like to make your own, the link to the source code is in the description. For those of you who are curious, the Gemma does not bother Momo at all. See? She has a noise. She's gently okay with loud noises. Your pets might be bothered, so if you decide to make one, test it carefully. There's also the possibility that high volume ultrasound, even though you can't hear it, could damage your hearing. So until there are better tests, best to only use it for short durations. Thanks to everyone for being so patient with my updates. For this video, I got help with the engineering and shooting outside, but 
I don't have any employees and I'm pretty much a one woman operation. I do all the video editing, come up with all the ideas, do all the fabrication and CAD. So it can take a while for me to finish each project. Huge thanks to JLCPCB for sponsoring this video and helping me with some of the engineering. Thanks to my sponsors at Creality 3D for letting me test the new LD006 version printer and thanks to Ethan for all the resin they sent me to use. I'm putting links to them all in the description box. If you order, please thank them for their support. That's it for today. I'll see you all next time. And remember, if I can do it, anyone can do it.